How many days are in a year? Well, it turns out about 365 and a quarter, but since calendars only support whole numbers of days, um, most years have 365 days, the so-called common years, and um, about every fourth year has an additional day, um, February 29th. Those are called leap years. Um, okay, so maybe um, let's simplify this number a bit. Let's pretend that a year has 365.25 days. And if we didn't have leap years, um, if every calendar year had 365 uh, days, then we would be missing um, a quarter of a day after one year. And uh, after two years, we would be missing half a day. After three years, we would be missing three quarters of a day. And after four years, we would be missing a whole day. And that's why approximately every fourth year is a leap year. Um, how could we represent, represent this visually? We could simply say um, a common year is a dot. So we have one, two, three common years followed by a leap year. Let's take a vertical bar for that. So one, two, three, four. And since programmers tend to count from, from zero and not from one, let's take the four and put it here um, as a zero. So zero, one, two, three. So that's the pattern that repeats so if a year is divisible by four, then it's a leap year. And if it's not divisible by four, then it's um, not a leap year. So let's first define a function that tests divisible if um, x is divisible by y. That's the case when zero is the re remainder of x divided by y. Okay, and then we can define the leap year test for a given year simply by testing if divisible here by four. Okay, and then we can do a quick uh, test. So uh, is, I don't know, 2018 a leap year? It's not because the rest is four. Uh, I'm sorry, two divided by four, but 2016 was a leap year. Um, so just to gain a little more confidence in our code, let's, let's write some tests so I can say, maybe some test for uh, years that are leap years. For example, um, the 2016 was a leap year and then uh, 2012, 2008, like this. Um, okay, and then if we run those t tests, we should have um, everything working. Uh, one test, three assertions, yeah, that's looking good. Um, of course, I want to have more than three little assertions, uh, but I don't really want to have to write all this boilerplate code with a is and leap year and parents and stuff. And it turns out there's a nice little macro for um, those cases when all your tests look very similar or all your assertions. That macro is called R. Um, we want to test one number and uh, we want to simply check if leap year for that number um, is true. And then we can simply uh, list the numbers that we're interested in. So 2016, 12, and 2008. That would be the equivalent test. And let's close all the parents. And that should give us the exact um, same result. So I, I like this very much, the R macro. OK, so let's make um, a somewhat uh, more complete test suit. So just some uh, leap years from from the last, I don't know, uh, 30 years, uh, 2000, 2004, or 40 years even, uh, 12 and 16. Okay, all of those should be leap years. Okay, and uh, of course, this test would uh, succeed if we simply always return true. So we also need tests for, for common years. So what are common years? Those are years that are not leap years and what are good examples for that. Uh, for example, some years around the turn of the century. Um, those should be somewhat sensible tests. And now we have 16 assertions instead of 10. So that looks um, rather good for our current model. Okay, um, so we started with the number 0 0.25. But if we look at the real number, it looks more like 0 0.24. Um, what would that change? So if we have uh, 0 0.24, after how many years? 
what do we get a difference between those two models? Um, well, since they differ um, at the um, 1 over 100 uh, digit, we should expect a different after 100 years, right? <laughs> you can probably do it in your head. So in our current model, we have 25 leap years every 100 years. And in, the, uh, in our next approach, we only have 24 leap years. So uh, currently, we have too many leap years in our model. How could we uh, visualize this? So if these are four years. I need to paste this 25 times. So one, two, three, four, five. And that again, one, two, three, four, five. That should be 100 years. And now we have to get rid of one of those um, leap years. So let's turn one of those leap years into a common year. So let's simply pick the first one. So now um, we only have 24 leap years in 100 years. Um, it turns out it's easier to program this if we reverse the conditions. So a function called not divisible will become um, more useful where the remainder is not equal to zero. And then let's simply write this as a series of um, conditions. So I say if we are not divisible by four, um, not divisible by four, which of these um, numbers or years are not divisible by four. These are the first three that are not divisible by four. These are the next three that are not divisible by four. These are the next three. So when the number is not divisible by four, you are guaranteed um, that it is not a leap year. If you instead test it, if it was divisible by four, uh, we wouldn't really know if it's a leap year or not, right? Because this dot is divisible by four, but also this bar is divisible by four. So that's why we reversed the condition. Not divisible by four, definitely not a leap year. And um, if it's not divisible by a hundred, um, that would be this one, this one, this one, right? We always land on the vertical bar. So that's definitely um, a leap year. And all other cases um, are not leap years and it's only this case that remains really, right? Because all other cases have already been excluded. So let's um, evaluate not divisible and the new version of leap year. Let's um, look at the tests. So now in our current model 2000 is no longer a leap year. So let's uh, get rid of that. Instead, uh, we put it over here. And uh, then we have years such as 1600, 1700, uh, 1800, 1900, and a few more years like this. Okay, let's run everything. Okay. Um, what did we do wrong? Uh, is it just a hundred cases that are wrong? Okay. Uh, not divisible leap year. What did I do here? Oh, <laughs> okay, that's a very interesting bug. So um, as you can see from the parent highlighter, this expression is basically ignored. It has no side effects. And then this is the result of the function. So that's still the old version. So let's get rid of it close the parent and let's run everything again. Yeah, <laughs> you have to be very careful as always. Okay, so that that now works. Um, so what's our next step? So we started with 0 0.25, then we refined this to 0 0.24, but that's still not close enough to the real number. Let's try to get even closer. What's um, a nice round number that's closer to that? Let's pick maybe not 2, 2, but 2, 5. And that should give us an interesting result after 400 years. So let's look at the current model. Um, in 400 years, we have um, 96 um, leap years. But what we really want is 97 leap years. Okay, so let's um, again try to visualize this. 1, 2, 3, 4. So we need one additional leap year um, let's put it right at the beginning, right? If we put one additional leap year in, then we should have um, 97. Okay, let's again look here. Um, so with these cases, uh, what have we done here? True, right. So this true, uh, 
Okay, so so this true corresponds to these vertical bars, and we haven't checked um, the remaining four cases here. So that's what we still need to check. Okay, so not divisible, divisible by 400, not divisible by 400 are these four cases. So here we have a remainder of 100, 200, and 300. So those are not leap years. And the else case is just this remaining leap year. So that um, that is a leap year. And we can get rid of that. Okay, let's run the tests. Now some tests should fail. Right. <laughs> okay, why do some tests fail? Because um, the tests don't accommodate the fact that every 400 year, uh, year is indeed a leap year. Okay, so we simply need to move some tests around. So 2000 doesn't belong here, 1600 doesn't belong here, and 2400 doesn't belong here. So let's put 2000 back here, and um, 1600 back here, and 2400 back here. Okay, and now everything passes again. Okay, um, right, so Personally, I'm satisfied with this solution because um, I can look at the diagram and step by step um, by ex excluding first the easiest cases, just the three dots in a row, and then um, the, um, the leap years that are always there, and then uh, the common years that are always there, and then the last special case, the 400 case. I find this rather understandable. but. When you um, research this on the internet, you'll probably find um, solutions that don't require multiple conditions. Instead, they use Boolean algebra with and, or, not. And maybe you can do this yourself as a homework. So replace cont with and, or, not. Okay, that would be one interesting exercise. Okay. Um, now, when I looked at this a bit more, I was um, a bit sad that this comment is so easy to understand. You can immediately, immediately see the leap years, and here they are somewhat buried inside complicated conditions. And I thought, why can't we simply use these dots and bars as a kind of as a kind of lookup table? And of course, uh, the computer can't really see inside the comments. That's just uh, uninteresting noise for him. So let's turn the comment into a string. So let's end the string here. Let's start the string here. And then let's get rid of some extra characters. Okay. And then let's define this as the leap here string like this. Okay. Uh, maybe let's put this in the last line. Okay. And then let's simply check if we didn't de delete too many characters. So what, what is the length of the leap year string should be exactly 400, right? Okay. And then let's put it down here. And let's write another definition for leap year that is basically disables the definition above. Um, that simply uses that string as, as a lookup table. So maybe it's easiest to understand with a with a let expression. So let's first calculate the index into the string. That would be the remainder of the year and 400. Okay. Um, so now we know where we have to look. Then let's pick a character from the string. That would be character at the leap year string at that index. Okay. And then we simply compare whether that is. Um, the vertical bar. Okay, so that should work. Let's run all the tests. Yeah, and indeed everything still works. Um, <laughs> and I find this a quite a cute solution. And also, it maybe it's even more efficient, or it used to be more efficient on older hardware, because now we only have a single remainder operation, which is implemented as a division in hardware. And division used to be kind of slow back in the, in the days, right? Here we have up to three divisions. And here we only have a single division. And if the um, implementation of leap years or the logic where the leap years are were more irregular than this 
simple logic, then you could simply change the string and put the vertical bars wherever you want it. So this is a very, very flexible solution. Um, and you immediately see irregular, irregularities such as here, right? So this is a year that is divisible by 100, but um, not by 400. I find this really cute. Okay, um, right, so we have a string of length 400, um, but maybe you remember from the last video that a, that a char, we only use a char here to encode a single bit, basically, yes or no, um, but you can use a char to encode up to 16 bits, right? because a char is uh, a UTF-16 um, code unit. So you could <laughs> misuse a string as, as an even more efficient lookup table. And uh, that is another homework. So compress the string from 400 chars to 25 chars uh, using clever bit tricks. So this is maybe a more advanced exercise. Okay, um, what else do we have? Oh yeah, so we got very close to the real number but um, the real number is somewhat lower. So um, after some time, we put in leap years that um, shouldn't really be there, right? So you should maybe calculate on a piece of paper or write a program or whatever, uh, after how many years do we insert, um, I don't know, a leap year that shouldn't really be there. So how important is the difference between this number and this number, right? Do, should humans care about this? Okay, so um, let's get all our uh, implementations on the screen. Here we see them. And um, that's basically all I have for you today. See you next time.